सो आई गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एंड आई एम बैक अगेन विद अनदर रियली इंटरेस्टिंग कोडिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन वीडियो सो गाइज एज यू नो दैट आई डू अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग एंड कोडिंग रिलेटेड कॉन्टेंट एंड इफ यू लाइक माई कॉन्टेंट एंड यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न समथिंग विद मी प्रैक्टिस योर कोडिंग विद मी दैन प्लीज 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 डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर फर्दर नोटिफिकेशन and if you have any questions comments suggestions feedback for me please put them in the comment section below do give this video a big thumbs up guys and do share it with your friends as well so uh, about this video guys this is one of the top interview questions in lead code and today we are going to solve it right here in this video so without delaying any further let's get started so guys let's first read the problem statement the problem statement is uh, pretty straight forward guys basically Uh, we have been given a number n, and we want to find out how many prime numbers are there below that particular number. So, if the number is ten, then basically there are four prime numbers lesser than ten. For example, in this case, they are two, three, five, and seven. And here I am assuming, guys, that you already know what a prime number is. A prime number is basically a number which can only be divided by itself, or it can be divided by one. So for example if we take edge cases like if the value of n is 0 or if the n uh, value of n equals to 1 then then definitely the answer is 0 because uh, there is no prime number less than 1 in fact the prime numbers start from the value 2 so there are no prime numbers lesser than 2 and that's why if n is equals to 2 then the output will be 0 And uh, let's see the constraints, guys. The constraints are that the value of n is from zero to five into ten to the power six, which is a really high value. And if you uh, already have seen this problem, guys, then you will uh, notice that there are a lot of hints given into these problems. So I'll not read the hints out for you. I'll just jump on to the solution part. Uh, so, guys, let's start solving this question. And the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to solve this by the method of brute force. So, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to you know simply create a method called as uh, public uh, boolean check prime. And in this method, I'm just going to pass a number n, and I am just going to return true. If the number is a prime number, and I'm going to return false if a number is not a prime number. Okay, uh, so let's uh, start, guys. And what we are going to do here is I'm just going to calculate the limit until which we have to check. Uh, so as you know, guys, that if a number is a prime number, then basically all it could be. If a number is 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 not a prime number, right? So if a number is divisible by something other than one or itself, then its multiple are always lying uh, below its square root. So basically, we have to check the numbers from two to the square root of that number n, and then see if it actually is divisible by any of those numbers or not. And if it is, then it is not a prime number. If it is not divisible, then it is a Prime number. So integer i equals to two to i less than this limit value i plus plus. So if simply n divisible by i equal equals to uh, or n mod i equal equals to zero, then return true that it is uh, sorry return false that it is not a prime number. Otherwise return true that this is a prime number. And what we are going to do, guys, we are going to uh basically call this check prime function in this count primes method for all the numbers which are lesser than 1 so for and and definitely we have to first of all uh you know uh initialize our result value or let's make it count value so basically we will start from integer i equals to obviously we all know that Uh, one is not a prime number, so we will start from two. So i equals to two, so i less than n i plus plus, and if check prime i is equal equals to true, that means if i number is a prime number, then count becomes equals to plus plus, and finally we will return count. So this is basically a brute force approach, guys. This is a Most simple approach which we could think of. Uh, okay, so it says that possibly lossy conversion because QRT always returns a double value. So we have to cast this. 
which is fine and uh, this will still work for us and uh, no it's not working guys and uh, the reason is because we have done this i less than limit we have to do it less than equals to but i will actually tell you another way guys this is actually not the right way to do this so but but you can see guys that my answer matches the expected answer uh, so basically the approach is a, like simply a brute force approach we are just taking every number below than n and we are checking if that number is prime or not and the way we are checking the number is prime or not is by calculating the square root of that number and then iterating it from 2 to the square root and see if any of the number value is dividing that uh, initial original number if it is dividing then we return true uh, then we return false otherwise we return true okay so that's uh, how this brute force approach works guys and let's submit this solution and I think you guys already know that this is not going to get submitted and definitely it exceeds the time limit right. So that was the brute force approach guys and now there is a way to improve this approach. So I will just go one step ahead and I will try to improve this. So the first problem with this approach, uh, I mean there are many problems with this approach but one problem which I can think of right now that we are using this very heavy sqrt function so we can just simply delete this function here and instead of uh, doing this uh, sqrt we can just do like this so i into i less than n so instead of using the limit value if we can just multiply i with each other and we will say that okay if uh, the square of i is less than n then definitely the square root of n will be greater than i right so if the if n is greater than the square of i definitely n is uh, going to be greater than the root of i i mean root of n will be definitely greater than i itself so uh, this uh, problem will be solved by this one and that is how we can actually uh, avoid calling the heavy sqrt function and there is some problem yeah so sorry because i removed the equal to again uh, which i shouldn't have so now also you will see guys that this pretty much works but actually we didn't do much we just replaced the square root function with the you know multiplying i together even if we submit this solution also guys this is not going to work and it is also it is going to exceed our time limit as i told you before so there are a couple of reasons for it the first reason is definitely that this is going for order of n square guys because for every n we are checking the prime number and for that also we are taking n number of times we are checking all the numbers so this is just going to be n square and that is how that is why the time complexity is too much so now I will just delete this entire thing guys and let's just move on to the most optimal approach. Okay, so what is the most op optimal approach? So the first thing is guys definitely I am uh, initializing my count value to 0. And what I will do guys is I will just going to simply implement something like of a dynamic programming. I will just create an is prime array and uh, i am going to initialize it for n values so what i am going to initialize it for n values i am going to set every number as a prime number so i am just going to assume first hand that all the numbers from you know starting from uh, uh, 2 to n are all of them are prime number so i equals to 2 to i less than n i plus plus just set all the numbers as prime number so it's prime i becomes equals to 1 okay so this is our like this loop is only running n times so until now my time complexity is n okay now what i am going to do i am going to iterate again through this entire array but this time what I am going to do, this time I am going to find out uh, if my, uh, this time I am going to set is prime value 
to 0 for all the numbers which are multiples. Okay, and how I am going to do that? Let's see how. So, for i equals to 2 to i less than n, i plus plus. So, first of all guys, when I am iterating this, let's just keep into mind, uh, let's see this thing. Like, let, let's suppose uh, something called as 10 is there. Okay. So, if we take something as 10, what are the numbers before 10? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and finally 10. Okay. So, if we are taking i equals to 2, can I simply mark uh, all the multiples of 2 as not prime? So, if I make uh, 2 into 2, that is 4, I will such mark it as not prime. And if I take 3 into 3, that is 9, I can simply mark it as not, not prime. If I take 4 into 4 or 4 into 2 or 4 into 4, um, 4 into 3 anything like 2 into 3 here so 2 into 3 is 6 so I can just simply mark this as not prime so this is what we are going to do guys so I am um, not going to run this loop from 2 to i less than n I am only going to run it until i into i is less than equal to n and why I am making i into i less than equals to n because guys, there will never be a situation in that case, uh, because guys, until we reach uh, the square root of 10, okay, until I have like completed the square root of 10, square root of 10 is like 3 point something, right? So let's say until I have come, uh, come across this solution, I have already marked all my uh, non-prime numbers as 0. Because you can clearly see here that all the non-prime numbers are actually multiples of 2 and 3 only. So, if I simply mark all the multiples of 2 and 3, that means uh, 4, 6, 8 and the multiples of 3 are 6 and 9. If I just mark the multiples of 2 and 3 as non-prime, then my job is done. Right? So that's why I don't have to go until all the numbers. I only have to go until the numbers which are the square root of n. Because once I am covered to the square root of n, I basically have covered all the multiples of those numbers and I have basically covered all the non prime numbers. Okay? So I, I hope that is clear to you guys. So what we are going to do here, I am going to take the ith value now. And I will just check. Okay, is the ith value already marked as, uh, marked as uh, uh, non-prime? If yes, then I will simply continue. Then I don't have to do anything. But if the ith value is still a prime value, then I will have to check all its multiples and I will simply, you know, keep marking them as is prime i becomes equals to 0. Okay. So, for integer, integer j becomes equals to i into i and j should be less than n, j plus i. So, for all the multiples, because I am doing j plus i, so definitely I am doing multiples, okay. So, i into i, so let's suppose i is 2, so 2 into 2 which becomes equals to 4. And then every time, I so I will just uh, set is prime j becomes equals to 0. And now next time, this 4 will be get incremented by i. So i was 2. So 4 will now increment to 6. And then 6 will also set to 0. And then again 2 will be added. So then 8 will be also set to 0. Then the next i will come out to be 3. And then... You know, definitely 9, 3 into 3 is 9. So, 9 will set to 0. Again, when I will go to the next value, the i will get incremented to 4, which is definitely greater than the, uh, so 4 into 4 is 16, which is definitely greater than 10. So, this loop will break. And finally, this is prime array will contain all the numbers, one marked for those indexes, which are only prime. And 0 mark for all the indexes which are non-prime. So the last step is just to add up those values. So for i equals to 0 to i less than n, 
I plus us. In fact, you don't have to do it to zero. Just you have to do it by two. Result becomes equals to result plus is prime i. Okay. And finally, guys, return the result. Okay. Let's see if this actually works or not. Okay, so there has been some issue here because I didn't set like this. J becomes equal to J plus I. And now let's do this. Okay, so, oh, sorry. Because I made a variable as count and I returned a variable named result. So definitely that was the issue. So there are these uh, small compilation errors which you can fall into but try to avoid them. Now I will submit the solution guys and let's see if this actually works or not. And you can see guys that this solution is accepted. And... Uh, so yes guys let's see our runtime is pretty much acceptable and memory distribution is acceptable and that was a video guys we basically want to solve this uh, problem as quickly as possible and you can see that there are two n loops and one loop which is kind of uh, not going for n it is kind of square root of n into square root of n so, you know, kind of n, right? So, square root of n into square root of n is uh, n only. So, this comes out to be order of n problem instead of, or 3n problem, you can say, instead of order of n square problem, which we were facing before. So, I hope, guys, I didn't confuse you too much and you were able to understand the solution which I did. And that was a video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please do hit the like button on this video and share it with your friends as well. Uh, do subscribe to my channel guys and hit the bell icon so you can get notifications of all my videos. I post your videos every day from Monday to Friday. Uh, maybe sometimes I'm busy and I'm not able to post a video or sometimes there could be an issue uh, because of which I am not able to you know fulfill your request or comments which you have made but I try my best and I am trying my best to actually deliver uh, good content to you guys so that you know you are not disappointed by this channel and you actually learn something from it so uh, that was all the lecture guys and sorry so much for boring you and uh, I hope you learned something from it and I'll meet you guys next time. So, okay.